Here, the and second row of the grid has got the second low, of the Matstone racing cars that includes Todd Hazelwood together with the championship leader Shane Van Gisbergen. The grid lineup looks very different. So far it's Van Giz, two from two at 200 points in the credit this weekend. And away we go, a beautiful start by LeBrock. He's jumped away perfectly. They make an argument of it all the way to turn one, but JLB hangs on. LeBrock has got the lead coming out of turn two. Will Davison drops into second. Shane Van Gisbergen's already put a move on for third. You're just talking to LeBrock before and he was worried about the start. I wouldn't worry after that one. That was an absolute blinder. Now, can Davison put a little move on very early because he needs to make this quick because you've got Van Gisbergen in behind. So can he make that move stick down into turn six? Holdsworth and Winterbottom side by side through turn five and the kink up the back straight. LeBrock's got a tiny margin over Will Davison who's haunting him now into turn six and Van Gisbergen knocking on the door, looking high and low to try and find a way underneath Will Davison. And he's been very strong at the hairpin, Shane Van Gisbergen, so keep an eye on him in the braking area when they get up to turn four. Nothing between the top half dozen cars here at the moment. Jack LeBrock leads the standing lap. Eight point one seconds was his standing lap time, and he's oh. got to break badly. So badly he's going to run wide, and he relinquishes the lead. Damage to those front tyres, and that could be to do with some of the setup trauma of having to rush that car out there. So it's pinched to break nastily at the end of the straight, and that'll be something to do, I reckon, with that steering being offset and the car not being quite balanced. What a shame for LeBron. So that makes life a little easier temporarily for Will Davison. Now he's got all the worries of Van Gisbergen all over him. And I asked Matt Stone before, did you get it corner weighted properly? And he, re he looked at me without saying no, but I'm, I'm sure the corner weights are the issue there. Watch for Van Gisbergen. If he gets a good exit out of two and three here, this is where the pressure could come on Will Davison by the time they get up to this hairpin. But Will has done a lot of this. He knows how to cover. Parked it nicely in the middle of the road. He's Shane going. looks to go underneath him. Can he turn it tight enough and get power to the road? This is where Van Gisbergen's been traditionally strong this weekend and in years gone by. He sits it out there doing what Mark Larkin's been describing in the Hino Hut, trying to get the benefit of the disturbed air around Will's car. He threatens on the run. He jumps to the right, now fades to the left. Is there a gap down there? And he fires it down the inside. He's done it. They make contact. He's punched a little hole in the right rear corner. LeBron gets up the inside of Davis and they make contact. And Will's got the right rear in the dirt. And there goes Anton as well. So Anton's gone blazing. Wow. Hazelwood really did a ripping job and parked that car in the perfect spot then. But that was really, that was an under and over by Van Gisbergen that Will needed to be across then. Will was not able to cover him properly because he faded one way and flicked the other. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book, yeah. and Will got caught with it. So LeBron's gone all the way down to 24th after the lockup. Van Gisbergen over Deep Pasquale. Hazelwood now sitting in third. Reynolds in fourth. Davison in fifth. Now it's Brody Kostecki and James Courtney side by side through that bank kink. Look at the damage on the front of Thomas Randall's Castro and Mustang there. That bonnet was completely up in the middle of the braking area there. Now, has Shane just backed it off a little bit here, or has Anton got genuine pace against Van Gisbergen? Remember, he's got a bit of a tyre issue, hasn't he, Van Gisbergen, in this one? So he might be compromised in terms of overall tyre usage. But Anton's come at him. He's only 0.2. He's right in there. Well, he was fifth quickest on the last lap, Shane Van Gisbergen, where I Anton right behind him. Oh, I'm just not close enough. Anton saying he doesn't have enough turn. Yep. And uh, troubles here for Heimgartner in the RJ batteries entry back in the pit lane from damage early on. So they did an engine change. They also got it done in about 90 minutes down there. It was unrelated to the troubles that they had. Well, the interesting thing yeah, with the undercut, yeah, will Van Gisbergen respond? Rears only on Anton's car. No, 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 no. I don't think it was super quick, but it certainly wasn't a bad stop. You can see Bryce forward too. 
in the Middies Electrical Racing entry. So they haven't responded with Van Gisbergen straight away, Mark. Oh, 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 that was awkward. But maybe the pit stop gives them a little bit of leniency. They would have seen that number. Have a look at the amount of damage. He won't be able to see properly when he gets down here to the braking area. Certainly won't be able to spot an apex with accuracy, will he? And as soon as the speed comes back down, the bonnet folds back oh, down and just hits you. So in the lower speed stuff, it's fine. You see that witness mark on the left-hand front there of Will Davison's car because that was the contact that he had. There's Anton, the leader. Will be the leader. <laughs> Not at the moment, but it's what he called foot long cam. Penalty to car 10 for an unsafe release. An unsafe release for Lee Holdsworth, car 10. Henright, I'm not sure why. Make contact, but did they? No, not that I saw. But um, did he transit? If you transit too many garages in that lane, then that can be an issue. Or there might have been some other problem with tools or something. I don't know. There may have been something that we didn't see. So for Van Gisberg, and the longer that they can keep playing the game with the speed that they're showing, he was fifth fastest last lap, and Anton was second fastest. Ooh. How does this end? Word. Whew, got away with it. Um, yeah, the longer they can keep playing that game, then the newer and fresher the tyres are for Shane for the back end of the race. Yeah. Well, and especially if he's compromised on the quantity of tyres he's got left because those damaged tyres we report, re reported on earlier, better to go that way and give you a much better yield. Across the board with all with an opportunity to do well. We're looking at Brody Kostek, he's got 15 second penalty hanging over him at the moment. And the confirmation that there's a five second penalty hanging over Lee Holdsworth, who's busy battling him on the track there at the moment. In fact, they're having a pretty lively exchange out there. So, Tim Slade's come into the pit lane. 35-4, back to Will Davison. So he's got it, if he's, he's in that zone, he, if he can pop out in front, as in making it hard for Shane, it's going to be on. These guys are absolutely playing a towing game here at the moment. You've got Brody Kostecki and Lee Holdsworth, and they've been doing this for lap after lap after lap. They're absolutely locked in combat here. Last lap, Will Davison was the fastest, and uh, amazingly so when you see a replay image like that when he's got a bit of motocross action going. And then Anton was second quickest, and Shane was the fourth fastest car out there. Lee Holdsworth, does James Courtney get a benefit from this? Underneath Brody, and the answer to the question is yes. And in fact, James might get them both in the process here. Not much in it, and Courtney scoots through on the inside. And now, have a look at Brody down the inside of Lee, and wags the tail over the top of the hump at turn one, and then Frosty merges oh. into the battle here as well, and only just gets out in front of James Courtney. Knife edge. Ben Gisbergen in. Brand new tyre, green tyre, shiny new Dunlop Super Soft. On the loaded rear, he'll have pace. Gee, that right rear went on quick. That right rear fired on in one fluid move. Here, Here we is. go, this is the critical rejoin. This is going to determine the outcome of this race, and he's got him. I don't think anyone's actually done a three out there in this race, Mark. Oh, yes, there is. Cam Waters did a three six. Slade up the inside of Kostecki. He was able to turn easily underneath him then. A drag race now all the way down to turn six. You'd be having haunting memories of being on the outside through here the last time he was here. All looked a little bit neat and tidy by comparison that time. And Thomas Randall gets down the inside of Brody here as well. He uses every little bit of road right up against the guard right on the left-hand side. He's actually in a spot that's not far away from putting a move on Hazelwood now. So you've just got to manufacture the spot. You've got to try to construct the pass. This is the pass. The way to come off here now, he's just been able to get the car in the right spot. This is the side drafting that Mark Larkham did the analysis on, and he's been able to get it done. That's a really nicely constructed manoeuvre. Well done. Can he hold on down here? Can he get it stopped? He can. Can he slow it up enough to make sure that Hazel doesn't come back? Yes. David Couch, he claps his hands. He knows how important that was. Here we go. 
So Will's actually put a move on him, so they've swapped them around. So Will Davison's on the blaze now. So it's 1.8 seconds. Shane Van Gisbergen to Will Davison. Has Will got anything left in the tank? As they cross the line, four to go. Just not quite seeing Van Gisbergen there. He's just slightly out of frame. There he is off in the distance. That's the margin. Wonder what... Here we go. Asking you shall receive. Look at that. No, he's just giving it away. He's done a Brock Feeney. And with two fastest laps, so you get those yeah. extra points. I missed that uh, earlier in the second race. Because we're back to sprint racing mode, so there's bonus points when you stitch together the fastest lap. So it's a 52 flat near enough for Shane Van Gisbergen, who on the last lap, not only is he leading and does he have the fastest lap, he's also the fastest man out there at the moment. Last lap. So that's not a bad effort, is it, when you do the fastest lap of all of the 25 cars out there at this juncture in the race. And that was a 52-4. So it's only four tenths of a second away from his very best. On peak. Yeah. Now, is there a little challenge going here for third? Maybe. Reynolds might be close enough if he can have a lunge at six. But Shane's got it done. So it's been an immaculate weekend for him. Some aggressive passing in the first race yesterday out of the final corner, and he lines it up, slots yeah, another gear. Work, and Shane Van Gisbergen has put together a triple treat in Tasmania, and he's banked 300 Thank points from the start. Thank you guys. What a weekend. Awesome. What a weekend indeed. That's an impressive performance. 1.1 seconds officially the margin over Will Davison. Anton Di Pasquale in third, so Shelby Power Racing Team in second and third. David Reynolds missing out by four one hundredths of a second in the end from Anton. And then Todd Hazelwood a fighting fifth. Jack LeBrock incidentally uh, not recovering from the trauma early on and down in 23rd position despite starting on the front row of the grid. There's our victors. A beautiful job by all three of them today to get valuable points. We thought that there may be the prospect of victory there for Will Davison today. And yes. These guys have denied it. And what a complete performance by this man. Keep on talking about his championship from last year and what he put on for the start of the 2021 20, campaign. But what he's done in this year's Repco Supercars Championship is amazing. And if you talk about drivers in history at their absolute peak and you think of people like Peter Brock or Jim Richards or Dick Johnson or Craig Lowndes you've got to think right now or Jamie Winkup you think about this man because he is absolutely driving at the very peak of his career checking those results for you and it's a 1.1 second margin Shane Van Gisbergen over Will Davison from Anton Di Pasquale, David Reynolds, Todd Hazelwood, Cam Waters, Winterbottom, Feeney, Courtney and Percat and then further afield on the next page we've got Slade, Holdsworth, Randall, Pye, Brown, Pitha, Kostecki, Smith, Mostert and Jones and the next group involved Jacobson, Fullwood, LeBrock, Heimgartner and Jake Kostecki. In fairness we tease you but You've been through that kind of patch as well, Mark, where you're totally at home with your car, 